Here you go. Well, well, where are your friends? Where's Ellen? Where's Kim? There, Miss Steve. Oh, well. I'm sorry they're not here to hear this. Did you get the results back? Yes, I did. This IV is clean, Betsy. It's as clean as a whistle. Wait, what do you mean clean? I mean that there is nothing in there that shouldn't be in there. I don't believe it. Would you like to see the, the results of the I'm test? I'm sorry, there must have been some mistake, that's all, John. I don't think so, Betsy. But I thought I was you so... You thought your husband was being poisoned. I was sure of it. There's something wrong with Steve. We don't know what it is, but I can assure you he is not being poisoned. Where have you been? Out. You should have been here. I needed you here. Why weren't you here? Diana, don't I get time off for good behavior? No, you never have good behavior. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I was taking care of business. What kind of business? I had to make sure that Maggie's gonna be here tonight. That doesn't sound like business to me. No, but it does to Haskell. That's what's important. Is this some kind of new plan? Yeah. And Haskell thinks it's his. He thinks he's going to use Maggie to keep an eye on the DA's office, but it's going to be the other way around. Ooh, what about Maggie? You think she's, she thinks she's up to this kind of double agent stuff? Well, I don't think she'd do it if she couldn't handle it. What about me? I thought I could handle it. I can. It's sending me around the bend. I know, Diana. What do you want to talk to me about? Oh, um, how do I look? You look great. Oh, you like it? You think uh, Mr. Haskell will like it? It's new. What are you up to? Nothing. I just uh, want to make sure that Jack finds me irresistible. Of course he does. He's been slobbering over you for weeks. What are you up to, Diana? Spill it. There's nothing to spill. Well, I hope not. Remember what happened last time you tried to pull something on Haskell? But, Kill, this madness has just got to end. It will. Just give it some time. No, tonight. It has to end tonight. Tonight? I don't think so, Diana. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen because I am going to make it happen. Well, don't try and pull anything on Haskell, Diana. Or you're going to end up dead. I heard you and Cal talking. Now, what is going on? There's nothing going on. I heard you, damn it. And don't tell me I didn't. What did you hear? I heard him tell you to lie to me. That he needs you tonight. You're having an affair with him, aren't you? This portion brought to you today by Mountain Grown Folgers. Folgers is the best part of waking up. And by new little shampoo and conditioners. Ultimate softness for permed hair. How could you think I'm having an affair with Cal Randolph? You were going to go and see him tonight, weren't you? You weren't going to the hospital to see Lila or right. anything right. else. Would you calm down and let me explain. I was going to see Cal, and I am going to see Cal, and I didn't tell you about it because I thought you'd ask why. You're damn right I want to know why. Because it's business. Business? What kind of business? Anything to do with the yacht? Frank, I can't tell you. You can't or you won't? Listen, Frank, you've just got to trust me on this. Can I, Maggie? Well, if you can't trust me now, I don't know when you can. Maggie, I want to trust you. But with Randolph... Look, I know how he's been after you from the start. So how do you expect me to react to all this? We had this special evening all planned out, and when I come back home, you're making plans with Randolph? And did you lie to me about it? You're telling me you're going to go see your sister in the hospital? Did you even call her? No, Frank. So you lied to me about that, too? I had to. But she won't tell me what's going on I here. didn't say won't. I said can't. Why not? Frank! I am not allowed to. This is for your protection. For my protection? Frank, we're involved in an undercover operation. How come I don't know anything about this because thing? Because the police aren't the ones who set it up. Then who did? Frank, stop. Maggie, this doesn't make any sense. I can't tell you any more about this. I've already told you more than I should. I still don't understand how Cal Randolph can be involved in all this. Frank, unless it has something to do with the yacht. This is my job, and it's all I can tell you. Is the mob involved in this? Frank. Did Randolph get himself involved with the rackets? Frank, would, is you, that it? would you stop asking me about this? No, I won't. Maggie, I'm worried about you. Can't you tell that? Where do you think you're going? I'm going to see Randolph. 
and tell him to leave you out of this. You'll do no such thing. This is my job. I have to do it. I have no choice. You certainly do have a choice, Peggy. What? You can quit. quit. No job is good enough to risk your neck for. You're a fine one to talk. You go out and get yourself shot and nearly die. And then you tell me you're going back to the force and I didn't say a thing. I didn't say anything, Frank. Because I know how important your work is to you. I know how much a part of you it is. I understand, which is more than I can say for you. Diana, have you heard a word I said? Don't worry about me. Nothing's going to happen. I have it all figured out. That's what you said the last time when you tried to shortchange Haskell on his half of the take. All right, that didn't work, but that's just because I was working with his stupid sidekick. This time I'm going straight to the source. Haskell doesn't handle the money, Diana. That's why he uses a middleman. That's why I am going to eliminate the middleman. How? Eh, never mind, but Lewis is going to go. Well, what's to keep uh, Haskell from getting somebody else? That's between Jack and me. Is that my name I hear? It certainly is. There's a couple of things I want to discuss with you two. Jack, before we get into that, I have a little problem that I really do need to talk to you about. What's that? Well, Diana, don't you have something to do in the kitchen? Would you be a darling and take care of it for me? Well, it's something that requires your personal touch. Then I'll attend to it later, because Jack is far more important. What exactly did you want to discuss with me? Well, it has to do with our business operations. I'd like to make one little change. I don't understand. I was sure that it was poison. Well, it's not. Well, how could I have been so wrong? I mean, it was the only thing that made any sense at all. Look, we have not ruled out the possibility of hepatitis, you know. Well, wouldn't if your tests have shown that by now, Not John? necessarily. There are some strains that just don't show up right away. Well, what if it isn't hepatitis? Then we'll keep running tests until we find out what it is. Well, how can you, if, if you keep taking You're going to drive you're not... yourself crazy with all the ifs here. We're going to find it. Don't worry. You think I'm crazy, too, don't I, you? No, I just think you're very frightened. I think you're trying to find out what's wrong with your husband. But that's my job, okay? Let Bob and me do it. Well, I hope you can. We will. I promise you we will. John, what are the results on Steve's IV bag? Uh, there's no toxin in there at all. None whatsoever. Oh, thank God. Are you sure that it can't be uh, some other kind of form of contamination? Maybe it wasn't the IV bag. Maybe it was the needle or something that got infected. Betsy, that's highly unlikely. Well, uh, what about the air in the room? Or, or maybe somebody uh, touched his skin with honey, some... Honey, honey, Steve is not being poisoned. How do we know that? We don't know. Shh, shh, shh. Do know now we do know and i have to admit for a while i was beginning to believe that myself but now the tests have been run and we realize that is not what is happening to steve i would think that you would be relieved well at least then we would know what it is we could do something about it let's see we're not giving up on this we'll keep at it until we find the cause i just hope it's not too late <sighs> what am i going to do i know what you mean What's the latest with Steve? No, it's not very good. Liver's still deteriorating. So Steve Andropoulos is in room 418. Thanks. Oh, excuse me. Heather! Baby, what are you doing home? I thought your plane wasn't going to land until tonight. I caught an earlier flight. I have missed you. Mm. Mm. I missed you too. You feel so good. Hey, look. Why didn't you call me and let me know you were coming? I would have picked you up at the airport. I did, but you weren't in. Oh, I was probably picking Nana. Um, Nan Stevens, this is my Hello. girlfriend. Hello. Hi. I've heard so much about you. It's me nice to meet too. you. too. Gosh, it's good to meet you, too. How's Steve? Well, he's, um, he's not so good right now. Did they figure out what's wrong with him? No, not yet. Well, where's Bess? I, she's probably in with Steve. Yeah. I'm going to go in and see them. Oh, um, baby, could you wait a minute? for both of you in, in Steve's room. Okay, Nan, I'll see you in there. <laughs> so how's your daddy? He's much, much better. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. He's going to be coming home in a few days. Oh. <clears throat> well, I guess that means I'm going to be moving out. Well, there are going to be a lot of new arrangements in my life. Oh, yeah? Well, um, I hope those new arrangements include me. I've made some decisions. Yeah, well, that's good. Tell me about them, because I sure could use some good news right now. Later. Tonight. I want this to be a very, very special evening. Well, I like the sound of that. 
I'll tell you what, I'll take you all the details. I have missed you so much. Mm. Not, mm. not half as much as I've missed you. I've taken the liberty to go over the stats on those thoroughbreds. I think we got real money horses here. Now, if we can just work out a syndication deal after these next couple of winners, we're going to have a lineage. If we get a limited partnership going with Amber, we're talking about the phone call was about Sierra, right? Yes. Senator Coward. And? Thinks there's minimal chance that anybody got out of Montego. Uh -huh. That's it. That's what he came up with. Yes, that's all. Terrific. He gave me some advice. What's that? He told me just stop hoping for miracles. And I'm, I believe him. If he thinks Sierra's dead, he's wrong. Oh, he's wrong. Yep. He's wrong. Yes. Then why has nobody been able to find Don't do him? this. Don't give up. I've done what I can, Carl. I have done what I can. I can't take it. I can't go on hoping and dreaming, daydreaming, hoping that something's going to happen that's not going to happen. I'm just going to put the whole thing behind me. Just like that, you're going to put it behind you like a bad dream. I thought you cared about her. It is a dream. It's a dream, and I've done everything that I can do to help her. I'm telling you she's alive. Don't you want that? Don't you want to find her? Don't you want her here? 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 Wait a minute. Now, Craig, have you overstepped... You... When you went down there, you were not to tell her my name. You, she was not to know here, me, what I did for her. Why not? I can't tell you. It's too complicated to go into. You afraid of her? <laughs> I afraid of her? No, well, I'm you're not. afraid of her. You're afraid of her, aren't you? No, I'm not afraid of her. That's absurd. The girl is missing. She's not, we don't even know if she's alive or dead, and you are afraid of her. Baby, we don't know how that girl would behave when she got here. You better start thinking about that, Lucinda. Because one day she may be. I'm telling you, she's alive. You never give up, do you? No, I don't. Hello, Mint Juleps. You never give up, do you? No, I don't. Hello, mint juleps. <laughs> I'm talking about the big time. We can be part of that. Darling, I've done all that. Well, I haven't. All right, we can do it. I don't want to talk about business now. What's the matter with you? I'm ravenous. Why don't we just pack in today? Why don't we go home and change our clothes and go out somewhere for dinner? I'm, I'm sorry. I have um, other plans. A date? Yeah. With my sister. I promised her I'd stop by. Oh, how is she doing? Not good. I mean, on top of everything else that she's got to deal with, she's got an inquiry coming up into the night of the shooting. I just figured I'd stop by and see if I could cheer her up a little. Well, you do have that effect on people. I'm glad that she's going to benefit. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or a dig. Both. <laughs> Give Lily a call. Why? Because she'd like to spend some time with you. And there's some wonderful movies in town. Why don't you take her out to a movie, huh? Hey, you're even doing my thinking for me. I like that. I like that. You know, actually, uh, uh, Jane, get me Miss Lily on the phone, will you? Uh, actually, um, she's supposed to be doing a term paper. Come on, I'll give her a break. All right. Yes, Matthew, hello, it's Mrs. Walsh. Would you put Lily on the line, please? Where is she? What? When? Where did they go? Thank you, Matthew. What is it? <clears throat> She's out with that little John Dixon in training pants. Dustin. 
Yes, he's taken her to a place called Lots of Rock. <laughs> it's it's just a dance club. It's just a dance club, yeah. just a rock dance club. At this hour, on a school night when she's supposed to be writing a paper, Matthew said that she came home 15 minutes later. She went out with, I mean, she sneaked out with Dustin. Well, come on, I don't think you can call it sneaking out if she let your butler know where she was. A, she's a straight A student. That's not the point. That's not the issue. I just don't know what's happening to that girl. I don't understand it. I do understand it. It's Dustin. Lots of rock. Lots of luck. She, before she met him and played around with him, she was a nice, straightforward little girl. You better face facts. She's not a little girl anymore. Well, she is not an adult well, why either. why don't you let her grow up? How? By letting her disobey me and lie? Why don't you try not putting her in a position where she feels that she has to lie? Oh, it's just so easy, isn't it, for Mr. Silvertongue? Usually I like that, but not when it concerns my daughter, who is a little girl. And I am not going to, I'm not prepared to think of her in any other way. And we'll talk about the syndication later. In other words, what you're saying is when it comes to your daughter Lily, I can just butt out, is that it? I'll talk to you later, Craig. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, I'll see you later. It's not too soon. Yes. You're going to have to go in there sooner or later, honey. Later, much not, later. No. Now we got to talk to McCloskey here. This inquiry is this week. Come on. you got friends in there. Might as well get it over with. Yeah. Sit over here. I'll go find McCloskey, okay? Hurry back. You know, they moved the inquiry up. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it looks like Churchill will be cleared. Well, he should be. I guess so. I mean, he didn't do anything about breaking radio silence. You got that right. He wasn't the one that wasn't following orders. Cool it, will you? Hughes is sitting right there. So what? She can't hear anything anyway. And now, part two of As the World Turns. Come on, Dino Hughes wasn't that bad. You want her as backup after what happened to Moran? Well, it's not something we have to worry about now. OK, 
Hey, what's wrong? I'm not so glad I got my hearing back. What happened? Oh. What happened? I'm hearing things that I don't really want to hear. Did somebody say something to you in there? They do blame me. They really do. Well, listen, whatever they said, don't worry about it, because this hearing, this inquiry is going to clear it all up, all right? Yeah. What about McCluskey? Well, he's not there, so we'll just go ahead to the audiologist, all right? Do we have to go? Yeah. Can't we just go? No. I think you spent enough time at home for a while, don't you? Besides, I took it upon myself to uh, get your mom and, uh, and Craig and John over there so they can share the good news with us. Oh. Right. Oh, come on. Who's here? Right. Your own cuz. <laughs> I thought I'd stop by and uh, find out what your excuse is this time to get out of work. And... Oh, I knew you would see through me. Huh. Doctors are trying to boot me out, but I, I got real attached to this place. Well, I'm glad to see you haven't lost your corny sense of humor. <laughs> Just my appetite. I can only keep this IV stuff down. Hey, it's okay. Don't talk too much, okay? I'm okay. How's Maggie? She's fine. She's a great lady. Take care of her. Hey, doesn't anything keep this guy from giving advice all the time? Oh. Hey, listen. You just get a lot of rest, all right? I'm going to be back real soon. They found out yet what's doing this to him. Well, they're assuming it's hepatitis, but I don't. You still think that it's that doctor that she used? I'm to... sure of it, Frankie. He's getting at Steve somehow. I don't know how. I, I thought it was something in the IV, but we had that checked out. And? And it wasn't that. Well, maybe you were wrong, madam. Then. Oh, great. Okay, so you don't believe me either. No, no, Betsy. Come on. Don't you think that the doctors would suspect it if it was poison? They don't know, Frank. Let's see. You're going to worry yourself to death if you keep up this way. Well, what am I supposed to do? Just give up? What happens to Steve then? you got to start worrying about yourself. You're not going to do Steve any good if you end up in a hospital bed yourself. Well, somebody's got to do something. And those somebodies are the doctors. Betsy, they're doing everything they can. I'm sure of that. And he's going to pull through this. Those are just words, Frank. Betsy, he's young and he's strong. Now, you got to have faith in him. What's faith in him got to do with it? Now, if he's being poisoned, he can't defend himself. He can't even get out of bed. Now, I know I'm right about this, and I'm not going to rest until I prove that Russ is doing something to kill my husband. So you don't like the way I'm handling things? Oh, no, Jack, I didn't say that. There's just one small little change I'd like to make. Such as what? Diane, why don't you stop bothering the man? Such as the way I deliver your half of the take to you. What's the problem? Lewis is the problem. Lewis has never been a problem to me before. Well, Lewis still isn't a problem for you. He's a problem for me. It seems as though Lewis wants to collect a little more than just the take. If you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. Well, it seems as though Lewis seems to think that I am part of the spoils. I'm not happy to hear this. I'm not happy to hear this at all. Well, I was hoping you would say that. Lewis has been bothering you? <sighs> Lewis has been bothering me. Why didn't you come to me with this sooner? Well, I thought I could handle it. I thought... I... But unfortunately, it's just gotten a little uh, too close for comfort. Well, you don't have to worry about Lewis anymore. I'll go talk to him about this right away. You know, I wish we could just keep him out of it altogether because well, I'm much more comfortable with you and, well, I just wish we could keep it between ourselves. Well, maybe you got a point. I'll go make this change immediately. I'll talk to him about this right now. Well, Mr. Haskell, what about what you wanted to talk to us about? Uh, we can discuss that all later. Well, not bad. Not bad at all. He might have even bought it. Might have. Of course he did. Don't count your chickens too fast, Diana. You might wind up with egg on your face. Save your folksy platitudes, Cal. 
I just got that crook to take the money right out of my hand, and as soon as Mitch gets that on camera, this whole nightmare is over. Murphy's chart, please. Oh, thank you. Just come from seeing Steve. Seems even worse than ever. If only there was something that you could do for me. Well, that's the wish of everyone on the staff of this hospital. The truth, I'm worried about Betsy, too. I don't know what's going to happen to her if she doesn't get some rest. She still won't go home? Oh, no way. I thought maybe when the test results from the IV came back, she would be reassured. But it is just exactly the opposite. She's more certain than ever that somebody's trying to poison Steve. Well, she's looking for answers, the same as we are. Poison him? No, there's just no proof. We've checked everything out. Anything new about him? No, no. I'm waiting on the results of the biopsy. There's still no evidence of hepatitis. No, but uh, we still have some time before we can rule it out completely. But in the meantime, I'm becoming very concerned that he's suffering from something far worse. What do you mean? Go ahead, tell it, John. Well, it's a condition that's hard to explain. It's hard to understand. The possibility that the liver itself may be allergic to its own secretions. I, I don't understand. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it is. It's a, it's a very difficult condition, very hard to explain. It's possible that one can develop an allergy uh, 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 to one's own tissue. And that being the case, then the liver secretions would indeed destroy the liver. Well, what would cause that? Oh, I don't know. A disease, an allergy, uh, a blow to the liver, such as when he was attacked. Well, is there anything you can do for that? We can administer drugs, but we can't guarantee anything. And once we took him off the drugs, he may have a relapse. Uh, we could do surgery if there was damaged tissue. We could be talking liver transplant. Oh, dear. Does Betsy know this? No, we haven't told Betsy. Not until we're uh, getting stronger evidence. Well, I think you should be. she should be told. Really? The state that she's in now, you see the way she reacts to these things. Something like that could drive her right over the edge. I think you underestimate the girl. I mean, she's made of strong stuff. I say we wait until we're sure we know what it is. Well, I think we should do the exploratory surgery that I recommended then. John, we've been through this. His condition is just not stable enough for surgery. But it's not getting any better, and it is not going to get better until we know what's causing I it. I say we wait. We'll use surgery as a last resort. Well, it just may come to that. I pray that it doesn't come to that. They don't deserve this. After all they've been through, they just don't deserve it. Ma, if you don't stop walking around like that, you're gonna drive me nuts. Why would Tom ask us to meet him here? Because Tom and Margot are downstairs with the audiologist. But I offered to meet him down there and he said no. Maybe Margot doesn't want to feel crowded right now. Or maybe she's having some kind of a problem. She's deaf. Do you want another problem? Well, it could be a, not a psychological problem. They could find out that it was a physical impairment or something. It could be worse. Maybe she's a little concerned about this inquiry that's coming up. Hmm? Oh, the inquiry. That's all she needs right now is this inquiry, everything she's been through. Well, Tom seems to feel that it would be a good idea for her to just go ahead and do it right away. I mean, she is going to be cleared, Ma. Maybe she'll be cleared. We don't know how they do things down there. Hi, Mama. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hi, honey. Hi. Hi. Tom, how is she? She's fine. Why don't you ask me? Wait a minute. Honey, you can hear? Yeah, you heard right, because I heard right, because I can hear, right? Oh, honey, 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 hon
Yesterday? Well, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you call me right Lila, away? Lila, try to understand. We just wanted to run some tests to make sure there were no problems. We didn't want to disappoint anyone. And you're all right. There are no problems. No problems. The audiologist gave her a clean bill of health. Oh. When did it happen? I mean, did it all happen at once? Come back gradually? What? What? Uh, just relax. All right. <laughs> some time later. All right now, let's just be relieved that I got my hearing back. Of course we'll relieve. Mm. And the important thing is that you can hear. Oh, honey, I'm so happy for you. I'm happy, too. Well, don't jump up and down about it, sis. <laughs> well, I am. I'm happy. You don't really look happy. I'm happy. I'm just... Oh, it's wonderful to have my hearing back. It really is. But I... Won't be so wonderful to hear what I'm going to have to hear, I guess. What are you talking about? Nothing. Forget it. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Forget it. Nothing special. All right, I'm here. What's the emergency? <laughs> no emergency, John. If this is another one of your schemes to get me to Oh, he's not me. scheming, and you can't lean on me Good. any longer. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, babe. Oh, that's so good. So nice. Oh. Hello. Good evening, Why don't you just have a seat at the bar? Thank you. Hi, nice to see you again. Um, my major deal will be with you. Or Andrew. Hi, Mr. Okay, the table. Thank you. play games with me. It's not healthy. See, when I play, I play to win. And I don't play with people who cheat, you understand? Yes. I hope you do. I really hope you do. Because I don't oh. want to hurt you, Diana. If I ever find anything funny going on around here, the game is over. Finish your drink. Looks like you need it. Well, look who's here. Oh, hi, Diana. Hi, Tucker. Hi, Heather. When did you get back? Just today. And this is her welcome back dinner. Well, then I better make sure you have the best seat in the place, right? Yeah, you know, I'm really glad we called ahead. The place is really packed tonight. Yes, it certainly is. Hi. Jack. Oh, uh, Tucker, Heather, I'd like you to meet Jack Haskell. He's one of our regular customers. How do you do? Well, I'd like to think I'm a little more than that by now. Uh, Diana, could I speak to you privately for a moment? Of course. My major deal to have your table in just a minute. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Sure. Looks like the start of a very successful evening, both upstairs and down. Yes. Hopefully it will be a night to end all nights. Have you thought about the suggestion I made earlier? I have, and it's a point well taken. See, money matters will be dealt with very differently from now on. You won't be dealing with Lewis anymore. Oh, Jack, thank you. Thank you so much. It's funny about Lewis. I never thought he'd come on to you the way he did. My favorite partner. Well, boys will be boys. I suppose so. But when I told him I didn't feature him coming on to you, he said he'd never done it. I never expected him to lie to me. Well, I wouldn't hold that against him. I just don't want to have to deal with him anymore, that's all. No, you're right. Well, you won't have to bother with that anymore. That's Randolph's problem now. What do you mean? Well, from now on, Cal will be handling the money matters with Lewis. See, they'll head up business affairs, and we'll just head up affairs. You know, I'm really, I'm really glad you're home. Yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. Yeah. Listen, you said something about arrangements and decisions that you've made. And, um, do those things have to do with your daddy coming home? Yeah. So, does that mean that you have decided to come live with me? Tucker, I couldn't do that. Look, besides, my father, he needs me to take care of him. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, I guess I misread you on that one, didn't I? I guess you did. Look, I, I thought your father was better. He's better, but he still has to take it easy. So, your new decisions and your arrangements have to do with just keeping us apart, huh? 
Baby, we're not going to be apart. We're just going to live apart. I want us to be together as much as possible. Well, I'm glad to see that you're at the right table. Sometimes they're not always straight about those kinds of things. Is everything all right? Oh, yeah, everything's just perfect. Uh, couldn't be better. Great. Oh, good. Well, you know, I, I was hoping maybe I could talk Heather into singing a little later on. I don't think so. Look, Heather, here, you got to sing. This is your hometown. Give them one. Well, I guess you ought to be the first to know, Diana. I'm going to have to beg off singing even here part-time. Well, Heather, when did you decide this? I decided it while I was away. I, you know, if I'm going to be a lawyer, I think I should put everything I've got into my job with Tom Hughes. But, Heather, you have such a wonderful voice, and, I, and I've been telling everybody that you'll be back here singing again. Well, thank you so much, Diana, but if anybody wants to hear me sing, they're going to have to stop by my church. I hope you understand. <laughs> of course I do. It's all right. Enjoy your evening. Thanks, Diana. So, is that part of your new decisions and arrangements, too? thought you'd be happy. I mean, we'll have a lot more time to be together. Well, I'll be happy if you're going to be happy. I just hope you're making the right decision, that's it. Oh, honey, I am. I don't want to have anything at all to do with a singing career. Uh, I don't. I really don't. Okay, all right. I, I, <laughs> I believe you. Look, I am happier than I have been in a long, long time. Excuse me, um, are you ready to order now? Yeah, yeah, I'll have the dark imported beer and the lady will have a glass of club soda. Wait a minute. Make that champagne for both of us. You want to order champagne? Great. There's a first time for everything. Besides, um, I think we ought to celebrate. Uh, whiskey on the rocks, please. Make it a double. Frank, you've never seen oh, a doubles type to me. Well, I guess uh, things changed. How are you feeling? Well, physically much better. Uh, I guess I will be back on the, the force in a few days. Oh, uh, well, where's your lovely <clears throat> new bride? Beats me. Thank you. She's not with you? No, I, uh, I had to work tonight. This late? Well, you know, when Maggie goes to work, she goes in 100%. Oh, well, I can relate to that. Uh, I'll be running a bill on this. Oh, no, you won't. No, no. These are all on me tonight. All right. Thanks. Here's the work. Thank you. Oh, Brandon, can I have the usual, please? And I'll have a club of soda. Yes, sir. Oh, you're teetotaling it tonight, huh, Mr. Haskell? I don't usually drink on the job. Well, I'm not on duty yet. What do you want to talk to me about? Yeah, it's about your friend, uh, Maggie, the assistant DA. How's it going with her? Well, it couldn't be better, as you saw the other day. So it seems. Yeah, well, what can I say? She's crazy about me. Fine, keep it up. Nothing like a couple of good friends, is it? Well, she's more than a good friend. A lot more. <laughs> you get as close to her as you can, you hear? Thank you. Uh, Brendan. Oh, you see that guy at the bar there? Would you buy him a drink on me, please? Certainly. Who's that? Oh, he's a buddy of mine. He's a cop. That could be interesting. Well, forget it. He's an honest cop, Mr. Haskell. <laughs> so, there's no such thing as an honest cop. Don't you know that by now? Who's that from? They auctioned off my pioneer daddy bought it. That's when I first met him. Mm, I love that story, Mama. And I love your cooking, honey. Well, Crisco's what makes it taste so special. Mmm, that pie looks real tempting. Where do you try it? The filling is rich and chocolatey. But nothing makes my crust flakier than Crisco. Mmm, it just melts in my mouth. Mama, have you always used Crisco? Hey, girls, I learned pretty early. A great tasting pie starts with a Crisco crust. It's even flaky on the bottom. Mmm, Mama, this really tastes good. And Crisco has no cholesterol. Now, honey, what will you bid for seconds? Is that enough? Wow. Crisco will do your prep every time. Who says new liquid tide cleans some of your toughest stains better than any other liquid? 
you do. And in nationwide tests, hundreds of you proved it. Now others are seeing the same results. Oh, my goodness! I don't believe it. It's liquid tide. Liquid tide does get the grass stain out. The dirt was ground in. And I washed it with my liquid, and it just did not come clean. And then I used liquid tide, and it's clean. It's a measuring cup. Oh, well, that's convenient. Very nice. And a pouring spout. The liquid tide cleaned uh, the tough grass stain far better than my liquid. There is a difference. Liquid tide is better. You can say new liquid tide cleans better because you can see it cleans better. See for yourself. It's perfect. I know just who she means. After yesterday, I expected bread and water for lunch. But look. Today, Mom gave me a kiss, a little Hershey's kiss. Well, my mother says nobody's perfect. She could be my sister. Hershey's kisses, they're only little till you taste them. Sunday, a cabaret owner's gunned down. Who shot him? And Angela Lansbury's caught in a baffling maze of backstage desires. Oh, dear. Gabe Kaplan and Jeannie Francis guest on Murder, She Wrote. Then, on Crazy Like a Fox, Harry's set up for murder. I'm innocent. But when they pursue the killer, hounds track the foxes. Sunday. <laughs> Premiering Saturday, March 30th, it's a brand new animated series with original and exciting adventures from the hottest children's stories. Bob Keeshan hosts the all-new CBS Story Break. See you again, Maggie. It's nice to see you, Mr. Haskell. Well, I don't want to interrupt anything. I'm sure you two would rather be alone. Well, you remind me, Mr. Haskell. If you'll excuse me, I'll see the two of you later. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just showing Mr. Haskell how happy we are to see each other. Please, not here in front of everybody. Well, you started it. Remember the other night? How could I forget? Who'd you tell Frank after I left? Is he straighten it all out? No. He thinks we're having an affair. First Haskell, now Frank. What'd you tell him? What could I tell him? Oh, well, I don't know. Something that wouldn't get us into trouble, I hope. I didn't tell him the truth, but I told him it was business. Well, that's good, Maggie. Well, I don't think we can uh, go on with this too long. I mean, we can't keep it under wraps forever. How could we go someplace where we could be alone, someplace more private? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. No, I gotta stay here with Steve. Thanks for being here, though. Sure, I, I just think you should look after your own health, too. I'll be all right. You be careful getting home, okay? All right, all right, call the taxi, and the guards went outside the cabin door, so I'll be fine, Kim. Thanks for everything. Yeah, sure. Just glad I could help you. Okay. Take care. You too. Hi, how you doing? Hey, what are you doing here? The World Turns has been brought to you today by Rich Delicious Folgers Crystals and by Dawn, the dishwashing liquid that takes grease out of your way. Stay tuned for Capital, next on most of these CBS stations.
gowns and women's sweaters by Tony Lambert. Furs by Christie Brothers.